Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to continue to work on the trees that I'll be putting in the Toronto Bonsai Society Spring Show and Sale, which is coming next weekend. I'm very excited. Yesterday I was working away at my miniature bonsai bench and I have lots more details that I need to finish on this planting. So that is where I will start today. I've been rearranging items in the landscape. So I moved the winter jasmine over to the left hand side and the boots over to the right hand side. I put a, a, a one of Sophie's pots underneath the bench here just to add a bit of variety in you know styles of pots and colors. I was looking at placing some plants behind the bench kind of a backdrop that you can see through the space between the top of the table and the shelf underneath. So I have these two trees in pots here, these ones, and so I place them behind the bench. I'll show you that. I've just put them kind of back here. And the other one back here. They fit quite nicely and it gives me an idea of what, you know, a background looks like, a background of plants looks like underneath that shelf. So let's get the camera down lower now. Here's a look at those plants. So you can see them kind of in the distance and it adds a bit of depth to the whole planting. It has something that's kind of far away, makes the bench look closer to you. So I really like having that backdrop of plants. Now I could leave them in pots like that. They look fine. I mean, it's quite typical to have potted plants around your bench. So that's all I have is those two in the pot like that, that would kind of fit. Yeah, I'm wondering if I need to go out and buy some more plants to kind of plant back there or if I should just use the potted ones like I have. Tough decision. I think, you know, grasses would look good back there. Tall ornamental grasses would look very nice. Um, I, I like them in the pots there. I think they look just fine like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. I do like the two pots there. So maybe I just need some more potted plants to put back there. I'm also going to be working on the trees on the bench today, adding the moss to the surface of the soil, similar to the uh, tall tree here. I've got two Portulacaria afro plants here, and I'm thinking I have this, uh, this Arizona cypress here that I could miniaturize and plant in one of these pots by Sophie, and I could replace the one up here with the Arizona cypress. I think that would look quite nice. So I'm going to plant the Arizona cypress next or miniaturize it, try and fit it in that small pot. I almost forgot, I have this rock here and I was thinking of putting it in the planting, maybe in the corner here, just to add another detail to the my bench here, my bench landscape, just something else to explore with your eyes. I'm going to begin the work on the Arizona Cypress. So I envisioned pruning it off in height down to about here. You can see there's sort of a conical form to the lower part. So I'm thinking right here is a good place to prune it. So here I go. Like that. Taking the whole top off. So I'm left with a much smaller tree now. Now I'm hoping it has a good root system because this is an awfully small pot to put it in. All right, let's get a tray under here to catch the soil. And I will loosen the tree up in the pot. So this was grown from a seed, so I have no idea what the root system is going to look like. It might be just one big tap root. Who knows? It is in really, really good bonsai. So, oh, there is a trunk on it. Well, I didn't expect that. Maybe it's been potted up already once. I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, let me see if I can pull this out. There I go. Wow. So, looking nice. I like the little trunk on it. Let me comb out these roots. They're very, very delicate. Baby roots. Not a lot of wood on them yet. 
but it's nice and compact. It's uh, looking promising for fitting it in that tiny, tiny pot of Sophie's. So these Arizona Cypress sure seem to like this bonsai soil. Just getting the big particles out here. Okay, look at that. That is a really nice little tree. Very pleased with that. Okay, so I need to do some root pruning. Here's my pot. Oh my goodness, that's a small pot. I'm going to put this in water. I don't want the roots drying out while I get the pot ready. Actually, I'll just put it in here and I'll give it a, a water to keep it moist. All right, that'll keep them moist. All right, I'm ready to start the root pruning. So the theory is I've taken, you know, 75% of the top of the tree off so the roots I, I don't need such an extensive root system. So I'm going to prune off the ones going straight down first. Underneath the middle. I'm going to prune off my longer ones. Kind of a general trim on the edges because I need to do quite a bit of reduction to get it in this pot. There's the pot size. So a little more reduction, oh my goodness. Now I've got one root sticking up too high here. I'll take that one off. The one sticking straight up here, I'll remove like that. This one's sticking straight up, get rid of that. This one's going up, I'll take that one off. This one's too high, I'll take that one off. Kind of getting my radial root base established. Like that, this is a little long. It's looking good. Sure is a good looking root base. This is a little kind of curving at a funny angle, this one. Okay, how is that fitting in the pot? Well, it's getting closer. It's not there yet, is it? Oh dear, such a small pot. Okay, let's keep pruning. This one's kind of a bit of a mess there. Okay, well, that'll fit in the pot now. These are still a little long. There, that fits in the pot now. Oh my goodness, talk about root reduction. severe root reduction here. Yes, that'll fit in the pot. Okay, so I can't use that coarse of soil in this pot because it would just dry out too quickly. So I'm going to use, I'm thinking probably just sand, something very fine that'll hold the moisture in the pot. So I need to put a drainage screen in the bottom of the pot. So I will cut out a round drainage screen. Okay, so that fits in there really nicely. You can see it contours nicely to the shape of the bottom of the pot. Allows me to get the maximum amount of soil in there. If I used a stiffer screen, it would be flat on the bottom. I wouldn't be able to curve it like that. And I wouldn't be able to fit as much soil in. This will also drain really nicely. So next is my soil and I'm going to Put a bit of bonsai soil on the bottom, then the sand on top. All right, here I go with my bonsai soil. <laughs> Look like giant rocks in this pot. Okay, I think that's good. Now I'll put sand in on the rest. Okay, now, is there a front to this pot? Let's just have a look at that. Huh. Well, I don't know, the pot is nice from all sides. Let's look at the feet, maybe that 
will determine the front. I think I'm going to put the foot out front and use this as the front view. So the tree, the front of the tree, um, I do like it kind of leaning like that. I think that's a good front right there. So that's how I'll plant it. So here I go. Uh, there is a shoot on top here that's too long. I'm going to prune that back. Okay, here I go. Planting my miniature Arizona Cypress. Sorry, my hand's in the way there, but I'm just trying to fix the roots here, which I'm unable to do so, so I'll just have to prune the tip off. There. Okay, in goes the sand now. And I'm using my desert colored sand. Now, I doubt the tree is going to stay upright, but no, it wants to pop out of there. But maybe once I water it, it might stay in there. It's staying there. Okay, I need some water on it. Here I go. Draining really well. So that is looking nice. There's a little brown tip on it here I want to prune off. Come on, there. And I will have to place a stone on top of the, uh, of the cypress to keep it in place. I do have some miniature stones. I'll try those out. All right, here's my little miniature stones. Um, these, I forget where I got them from. I think someone sent them to me and they may have just been broken off of a larger stone, but they sure, I'm going to put a little more sand on there. They sure look miniature. And whenever you see little tiny textured stones, keep them because they're generally pretty good for using as, bo as uh, good for using with your bonsai or you know miniature bonsai anyway okay so that's got the sand up there now i'll put one stone over here these are very tiny by the way maybe maybe i'll put them like like that like that i think yeah So that is my cypress planted. Uh, it will need a little cleanup. Get the sand off the edge of the pot. However, I think it's looking very, very nice. Let's see how the cypress would look on the bonsai bench now. Does that look? Well, that's certainly tiny makes this tree look giant. Let me just uh, rotate it around a bit. Yeah, so I can see, you know, a little more pruning in this one just to get a bit more of a conical shape. But yeah, I, I'm really liking that. I think it's a nice, well, it's a different tree to all the others. So they're not just all succulents. It's, and it looks super miniature. It's yeah, really cool tree. And the, those seeds are from Derek. He uh, collected them when he was on a trip. And, and then I think, 
not sure who, I think maybe Jay germinated them. Next, I'm going to do some work on my Hinoki false cypress. I need to do a little weeding and some pruning up top. I have some weeds growing in here. There's some like grasses popping up, so I'll pull those out. By the roots and all. These are from seeds that were in the moss. There's a few more back here. Okay, so that's got the planting weeded. Now the moss is getting a little tall. Uh, to keep this looking miniature, I need to prune it kind of back to size. So I will do that. So just means getting the scissors and trimming the tips off the moss. And I need to clean the moss away from the lip of the pot too. So it's not overhanging the lip, tidy it up. So preparing these small trees for a show is just like preparing your larger ones. It's just everything is tiny. I should have my small scissors for doing this too. Okay, that's looking better. Now, I need to go up top on the tree here and get a bit of branch separation. It's really grown in. So for instance here, this is getting a little thick. So I will prune off this upper part here. No separation here, so I need to thin this out. So you can see a little bit of separation between the branches now. I think I'll take this upward one off. So pruning these little trees is the same as pruning a larger tree. It's just smaller. So you can see I'm getting some branch separation. It kind of exposes the trunk line also, but which may be good or bad in this case. It hasn't really got a, a good leader yet, but it, it'll come. So if I want a bit of staggered branching, I've got my apex here, I've got a branch here. I think, I think I'm too cluttered in the apex that maybe this one could come out. It's directly underneath the one above. So I'm going to prune this one right out. Like that. 
that allows me to keep the branch over here and then prune this one out to again open up some negative space you can see that now here I have two branches growing from one spot so I'll take the one out keeping the one coming out front So you can see here, it's just a ball of foliage that I need to get my branches defined in this area, which isn't easy to do. I think I just need to start cutting, revealing what's there because I can't tell. It's too dense. You also need a good pair of close-up glasses when you're working on tiny trees like this. You know, even those magnifier glasses are useful because they're so small. Okay, here's one growing upwards I can remove. That'll help open up that area a bit. I'll take this one out there it's cl cleaning this area up so sometimes you know I, I took a few blind cuts there just to open this up because I can't really tell where the branches are it's just a ball of foliage so yeah sometimes you just have to go in and start cutting away until you can see what's there it's a bit of a Here's one pointing upwards I can remove because I'm all these branches are going to be drooping on this tree. So you can see it's opening up slowly. Slowly and carefully. That's all you have to do. This one can be removed. And remember it's a three-dimensional tree so you don't want to prune it flat keep branches all the way around the tree someone's running a planer in the background there So the tree is really established in the pot well, like it's not, the roots have filled the pot definitely, which is nice. So it's looking better, it, it looks more tree-like now, I'm opening it up. So I will continue, this may take quite a while, I think it'll probably take me at least half an hour to do the tree, maybe even longer. Here is a look at my tree all pruned up, so I had to take a knob off here to help that transition where it had been cut before. I did a lot of thinning. It, it could probably use a little more thinning uh, eventually, but I don't want to take it down too far before the show. So I think this will do nicely. I think it's looking good. So back on the bench it goes. Next, I'm going to get the lantana down and do some work on it. Here is a look at the lantana. So you can see the new leaves coming in and how miniature they are because it's in a small pot. I'm going to prune away the older leaves here. There's one. Rotate it around the back here. There's another one. Okay. So I'm styling this. It's in a cascade pot, like a full cascade. And it's not a cascade yet, but this represents a tree in training. I'm going to, there's a stub here I'm going to prune off. Come on. Like that. And then I've got a stub on the end here. I better take that off. I can get in there. Oh, 
like that. So that improves the look of it. Now, I'm not going to prune this off, even though I want the cascade to develop. I might just pinch it back a bit. I'll take the stub off anyway. I will, I'll take this set of leaves off. Like that, makes it look a little more miniature. And I want to add some moss. I've got some bark in here. I'll take out some fur bark that's a little too big, out of scale. Uh, that one was definitely too big. I'm going to prune some of these roots up, these root hairs that are sticking out. They don't look very miniature. I must say, I really enjoy working on these tiny trees. It's kind of nice to be able to hold them in your hand and prune them. Okay, so that's got a lot of these kind of root hairs removed. Now I'm going to add some moss in here. So I have some moss, I can just Right in there and just work it in so it looks like it's been there forever. Okay, so that has got the moss in here and that looks much, much nicer. It kind of finishes the tree off. So there's a look at the moss. Yeah, and the whole tree, the leaves are a nice size. Um, I wouldn't say the roots are sorted out. Maybe I'll get rid of that one strange root here. That was kind of spoiling it. Some of these are spoiling it too, these hairy roots sticking up in the air. They spoil the miniature look of it. You wouldn't see that on a bonsai. So there's a ficus or something. Okay. Oh, there's still a few root hairs here. Off you go. I need a razor blade to shave it. I think my pruners here are sharp enough. Okay, I think that will do. I think it's looking really, really nice. Yeah. Maybe clean my pot up a bit before the show too. Okay, yeah, I think that lantana is looking miniature, kind of finished, and quite nice. So back on the bench it goes. Now, let's see what else. Um, I have this one. That needs a bit of finishing. I've got some branches that didn't develop there, and I should put some moss on it. So let's get that out next. All right, there's my jade. So I'm going to start by pruning these branches off, these dead branches. Like that. So this is just planted in sand and it's a succulent. So I'll just put some moss on the pot, kind of dress it up a bit. All right, here I go. Start with a clump here. I'm hoping to, like right now I have a lot of succulents in this miniature bonsai bench. Uh, maybe in the future I'll expand to, you know, Katoni asters and things. Maybe I'll have to start several bonsai benches. I think I'll run out of room for all the trees I want to make. So I think that is looking much better. There's another branch up top here. I can just snip the dead part off, clean it up a bit. Yeah, I think that's looking good. I think that can go back on the bolt side bench. There's a little bit of something there. Okay, yeah, back on the bench it goes. Next, I have my Portulacaria Afroforest here. 
I don't think I need to do anything with this. I think it looks fine with the sand on the forest floor. I can't see me pruning it anymore before the show. I mean, I could prune it, but I don't want it looking too sparse for the show. Well, maybe I could take this one branch out. It's interfering with the other, so I'll take this one out like that. That looks a little better. I've got opposite branches here. I'm going to take the one off. There, a little better. Okay, that can go back on the bench. I have my little grass planting here. So I think for this, I just need to prune away the longer shoots. They're uh, sticking out a little too far. Keep it a little more compact. Now it has some moss growing in there, but I could definitely use a bit more. Just taking out some of that surface soil. So a little bit more moss in there will kind of help dress this one up a bit. This moss isn't the greenest moss in the world, but I'm sure it'll green up eventually. Yeah, that looks better with the moss in there. Makes it look a little more finished. And just some at the back here. And I have a piece of perlite that I need to pick out. Okay, I think my little grass is looking nice. I wonder if I should pick out some of these dead bits. This died back in the transition from going indoors to outdoors. That looks okay, the dead grass. I mean, it shows the transition to spring. But maybe better to have a little less dead grass and more green grass. If I can grab that one. Come on. There. A few here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, I think that looks good. I think that's a nice little planting. Back on the bench it goes. Now next I have my little Thuja occidentalis. Uh, it's growing. It's pretty skinny. Not a very developed looking tree. However, it's something different. Um, maybe I can like prop it up a bit with the rock and plant some moss around it and it'll look kind of more a little better. So I'll put some moss around it. Let me just pick away some of the surface soil. Just leaving a bit of room for a layer of moss there. Okay, that looks good. Now I'll get some moss. I have to get some more moss, so I'll try and find some nice green moss. All right, I have some nice green moss, so I will apply it to the little Thuja planting. Trim it back a little so it fits in the pot here. There, that's better. I think I better give that a water. Normally I water these with misting bottles, but I don't have it out here. In there. Oh, it's soaking that up nicely. Okay. That can go back 
on the bench. I think that looks 100% better. I've cut away the original leaf that started this planting. It was a leaf cutting. And I've kind of reduced the soil down. So now I'm going to dress this with sand. I don't think it would look good with moss because it's more of a desert kind of succulent plant. So I'll get out my desert tan sand and top dress it. So here I go. And you can see some of the older sand starts turning a bit green with algae. So you can just scrape that away and top dress it if it's looking kind of bad. Okay, I think that is looking very, very nice. Back on the bench it goes. Here's a look at the trees on the bench now. So I could still dress up Isabella's pot here with the jade in it. Do that, just touch it up a bit. So I think everything's looking good in here. Um, I'm wondering ah, if the tree was offset a little more, a rock would look nice in here, but it's not, it's kind of central in the pot. so. I don't think a rock or anything would look good. Um, I could try one, see how it looks. Like that. Uh, I don't think it does anything. It's just, as I said, the tree's too symmetrical in the pot. It just creates too much weight and imbalance on the one side. So next time I repot this, I'll. I'll push it over in the pot and then maybe a little rock or something would look good with it. But for now, I think I'll just top dress it and that will be it. And this is another one. I guess I could put moss on it, but I'm not sure it would look good. Um, maybe it would. Maybe that's what I should do to make this a little different than the other ones. Let's put some moss. I'll look around for some moss and we'll try it out. I've got some moss from the sidewalk out front. It's a nice fine moss. So I will plant that around the tree. I'll just cut an opening for the tree here. Like that and then I can fit it around the base of the tree and kind of position it in the pot. Well, that gives a nice look to this plant. This is a nice moss. This moss that grows on the sidewalks or in between the cracks on the sidewalk. It's Always a nice bright green color. Well, that makes the uh, whole planting look a little more bright. Makes it look a little more special. Okay, back on the bench it goes. I think I'll try a little bit of moss on the Arizona Cypress here. I think it needs something a bit green to go with the rocks. So I've got some thin moss here. I can kind of plant here. I'm going to leave it at that. I may come back and touch it up just before the show, make it look a little better if I get time. But I think that'll do. It, it uh, makes it look a little more naturalistic with the moss there. Hopefully that moss will stay kind of green. I think I will put this rock in the corner here. So I need to bury it a bit. So I need to cut out my moss in that area. Peel it up like like the lawn and then I'll kind of sink the rock in like that and then I'll put the moss, I'll plant that uh, maybe here at the edge. Yeah, that looks better. 
Okay, so I'm going to step back and have a look at the planting now. And I still have the plants in the back row to solve, uh, to get going. And I've got some mulch that I need to put around the flower beds. So I'll do that also. Here is a look at the bonsai bench. So I've done a couple of things. I added some of Sophie's pots underneath the bottom shelf here. I think it looks good. It, it's, you know, if I, this was my bonsai bench, I'd have pots underneath there too. And then I have pots and watering cans on the bottom shelf, a few tools. Up here, this little tray, I put some moss in it. It gives me a little more room for my tool bench here, or my toolbox. Uh, Yeah, I think everything's looking good. Um, I, I definitely could use some more plants in the background there. You can kind of see them showing through there. But I think it's all looking very good, very miniature. I have no complaints. So just a few more plants in the background and I think I'll call this one finished. I've added a few more little hidden details in the garden. So down here I added a little bronze frog, which is kind of cool. And then you might notice back in the bushes here, there's a couple of bunnies over here. A couple of bunnies and then over this side, oh, there's another little bunny in there. Little rascals in the garden. Yeah, so there's a few more details. Now I have the coconut, the ground coconut husks that I'm going to put around the garden area here just to dress it up so it looks like, kind of like a cedar mulch or something. So that will be coming next. Here's a look at the coconut, ground coconut fibers. So this is from the pet store. I imagine it's a bedding for, I don't know, lizards or something. So that looks like mulch. So I'm going to put it around the garden beds. So here I go. Yeah, it's the right color for mulch and it reminds me of spring because in spring everyone mulches their gardens and they look really nice in spring and then they kind of forget about them for the rest of the year. But they always look very uh, neat and orderly in spring. If you like that kind of garden. So this little Garden planting, this miniature bonsai bench has lots of details now. So it's the kind of planting I like where you first look at it and you see a little miniature bonsai bench and then you look more and more and you find more and more little Easter eggs in it or little details. And it, it makes uh, it interesting so your eye you don't run out of things to look at. You kind of explore it for a long time. And I think that is what makes a really interesting little penging display or I don't know what you call this. Miniature world, I guess. Here is a look at my bonsai bench and it's kind of turning into more of a a bonsai garden now. It's got the whole garden around it. It's looking very colorful. I'm liking it a lot. I uh, I just need to add the plants at the back now. So that's about the only thing it's missing. So I will do that next. I'll turn the whole bench around so we see the back here. Like that. So you can see I've got several more pots that I can plant. Move this one over a bit. That one can move over to there, here, here, and here. I might as well make them all potted plants. So I think that looks good. That'll look good from the front. So next I've just got to plant them up with uh, various plants that I have on hand. So I'm going to look around and find things to put in these pots. In the basement, I had all these kumquat seedlings. They're just starting to come out into leaf now, so they're breaking dormancy. So it's a really good time to repot them. And 
it's a good excuse to get them out of these weedy, broken up pots, yogurt container, into something, well, a little better, not much better, but yeah, I can do a little root pruning, uh, check the soil, prune them up so they're not so tall, and then I'll use them as my backdrop plants here. I think that's a good solution. It kind of, I've got one, two, three, four, four trees here, three pots. So I could always change this one out for a kumquat. This one's a little low to see from the front. So that's what I'll do. I'll uh, repot all my kumquats into tiny, tiny pots. I had to take a break from doing the mini bonsai bench to water all my trees out here. They were starting to get dry in this full sun. I have got four kumquats to repot. So I'll just show you the repotting of one. The other three will be similar. And these are a member of the citrus family and they get little tiny fruits on them. They're, uh, they're great trees for bonsai. All right, I'll get the tree out of the pot. So this tree came from David uh, of the Toronto Bonsai Society. And this is from Japan. Uh, I don't know if this is a cutting or a seedling, but yeah, it came from one of the famous bonsai gardens in Japan. It looks like this is a seedling. You can tell by the way the taproot kind of snakes around. So yeah, a very uh, cool tree to have in the collection. So you can see, let me just move the soil aside here. You can see, you can see the taproot comes down and then it coils around, goes horizontal and then goes down again and then it goes b back up. No, it doesn't go back up, does it? No, it just goes down. Looks like it's been pruned there once or it hit the edge of the pot. So, so I'm going to have to do the big cut here. So I'm going to do the big cut on the tap root. I have some fine feeder roots up top here. So I'm going to, I'm going to take it off here, hoping to, ah, I'll just take it off here now. I think it'll survive. It's a good time of the year to do it. So here I go. Big cut there. So taking off the whole bottom of the roots and I hope there's enough roots here to keep it going. I will prune the top of the tree also. So I'm going to prune it back short here and here and where am I going to go here? Here and here. Pruning it back quite a bit shorter. Okay. It's time to plant it. I'll just remove this old leaf here. Yeah, time to plant it up in its new pot, which is a very small pot, but it's a good size for this root system. I've got a drainage screen cut for the bottom of the pot. I'm going to put a bit of this old bonsai soil in here. It looks like really good stuff. So there's that. Then I will Put the tree in and I will arrange the roots so they're as radial as I can get them. Like that. And then I will fill it back in with more of this bonsai soil, which is nice soil. It's got lava rock, looks like fine pumice kinds of good stuff in here. And then I'll top dress it with a bit of my soil. There I go, a bit more soil in there. That's maybe a little too full. Okay, that looks good and I'll give that a water. Here I go with the water, draining really nicely. You can see on this pot, this is a proper watering where I can put more water in the pot than can drain out. So the pot actually fills up with water and that's an ideal situation for bonsai because you know 
the water table goes right up and if you have a wide root base it's hard to water underneath the roots so when the water table goes up it makes sure every part of the soil in the pot is fully saturated with water so there that's all fully watered now I might as well add a bit of moss on top to make it look a bit decorative so all these kumquats have been chilling in the basement over the winter above freezing but not too much more not too much above freezing and now that it's out in the greenhouse here it should break dormancy and begin to grow okay so that's all planted up looks nice that should look good behind the bonsai bench I will continue on now and finish all the other trees I have finished the work on my miniature bonsai bench let's go in now and have a look the present moment my bench is just packed with details and this is about as complex as you could get now you could go the opposite way and make a very simple bench uh, nothing fancy um, so there's the two approaches simplicity or complexity uh, this is complex and you know maybe in the future I'll decide oh it's too busy it's just too much going on for the eye to see but at the moment I'm liking it because it does allow you to go in and explore all the details and it's I think it's fun going in and exploring all the details and yeah I, I think it's a, a fun kind of planting even though this is a fun planting I do want to develop all the trees into spectacular little trees if I can making them super detailed and miniature so that'll be an ongoing process well one keeping the trees alive and two trying to shape them better and better each year, getting them more and more mature. They shouldn't grow very fast in these small little pots, so I don't think I'll have to worry about, you know, super fast growth on them. I don't think they'll get out of control too quickly. And the other thing I have to worry about is keeping them alive. It will be tricky because they are in very small pots. I'll have to be very vigilant with the watering and uh, do my best. I like this better than the traditional bonsai displays where they have the lower shelf of trees underneath the upper shelf because the lower shelf is always shaded out by the upper uh, level. So I like the staggered shelving like this. I think it's a better solution. It shows the trees off more. I think it will be interesting to see what people think of this display at the show. Some people might like it and some people may not. I really enjoyed super detailing my miniature bonsai bench over the last couple of days. It was a very creative process and I had a lot of fun. 
So that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.